Hi guys, Sarah Fuller here with Easy Adapted PE. Today I'm gonna to talk about a simple activity that I use with my students who are in a self-contained or non-integrated setting during adapted PE. Typically these classes are comprised of students with varying abilities. So doing one lesson plan with one objective isn't going to be successful for all the students in the class. So I have a little tip and a trick as to how I successfully create lesson plans for all the students in these small groups and I know it's going to work every time. Before I get into that, if you could like, subscribe, that would be great. I will continue making these videos and we can continue sharing information. Okay, on to the good stuff. Here is what I do to create a successful, meaningful class for all of the students and the aides and me as a teacher. So if your class isn't going well, it can be very stressful. You can feel like you're failing. You can feel like the aides are looking at you, like what is he or she doing? They don't know what they're doing, like what's happening right now. So you always want to be prepared and you want to have a lesson that you know is going to work for all of the students so that there's not one or two kids that either aren't being challenged or that can't participate because the skill that you're asking them to do is just too high. So one of the things that I like to do, the main thing, is to take my student with the highest needs and really look at him or her and decide what is the student going to be successful at. So once I have that information and I know that this student is going to be able to participate and we are going to hit one of their goals, it might be a very simple task. And usually what I start with is pick up, put in. And I know it seems like it's not PE, but it is. It's as soon as that student understands that, is able to accomplish that, you can start moving the bucket further. It could become a toss in, it could become a throw in eventually. And then eventually you're getting to throwing to another partner or you're doing parallel play. So really it's that basic skill that we wanna focus on. So I have one student right now actually who's working on grasping. So for that student, I thought, okay, pick up, put in is perfect for him. He can pick up, he can hold on to the object and we can help him put in by hand over hand, helping him to let it go because he has a little bit of difficulty with that. So maybe he's letting it go over a basket. So it falls into a basket and that's putting in for that kiddo and that's great. Now I also have another student in the class that is very athletic. So I know that I need to challenge that student because if it's pick up and just drop into a basket, he is not going to hold on to that activity for very long. One of the things that I do for him is I start to create a story. And now the story is told to all of the students, but I know that he's really gonna grasp the concept. Balancing them either on a shovel or some kind of a scoop. We also use broom pans as well, we just get them from Dollar Tree. And the kiddos put the stuffed animals on to their shovel or the broom, Pan. Sometimes they scoop them up, which is an even higher skill. It's great to see that. They balance them over to the nets and they put the stuffed animal into the net, either by having it slide off of their shovel, maybe they toss it in, maybe they pick it up with the opposite hand and put it in. And the story we create around this is that the animals got loose from the zoo and we've got to put them back into their cages, right? To challenge the students even further, for those that know their colors, we might say, oh, the monkey has to go into the purple net or the purple cage. And the students now have another challenge to be looking, where is the purple net? Do I have the monkey? I still need to balance. So that's a very much higher skill. This task will typically last for about maybe five minutes. So this is not the world, this is not your entire lesson, but this is a nice little chunk of it where you can really look at the skills and you can see that our student who is grasping that stuffed animal and holding it and letting it go over the net is doing the same activity as our student who is balancing and scooping and putting in. So my main piece of advice is really to look at that student with the lowest skills and build that activity up. Start low, make sure that that student can be successful and it's meaningful to that student so that they can participate in the most independent way that they can. And then start pushing the envelope on that activity until you meet the needs of every single student up to your most athletic student in your class so that everybody is participating and everybody is being active and it's meaningful for everyone. They feel success and they feel that independence. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. Please, you know, as I said, subscribe and like and let's share some more information. Leave a comment below and tell me what you do for your self-contained or non-integrated small groups in adaptive PE. Thanks.